Hey everyone. So I've gotten quite a few comments on this neural network model in ML.net video, which was actually done just a bit over a year ago, last September. And the comments mentioned that some things in this video no longer apply. And so in this video, I'm going to do an update project for this. And instead of the sushi and sandwich data that are used in this video, I'm going to use this flowers recognition. So if you look at the data, it's got a set of five flowers, daisy, dandelion, rose, sunflower, and tulip. And we're going to build a deep neural network model in ML.net to classify a flower as one of these types. And so let's get started. We're here in a console application here. I already have my data inside my solution. So under an images tab, I have each of the flower labels as a directory. And in each of these directories is a set of 20 images for each of the labels. And then I have some test images here, one for each label that we'll be using to test our model. All right, so let's look at some NuGet packages here. So first off, we need Microsoft.ml for ML.net, version 1.5.2 here. All right, and since we're doing with image data, we need the image analytics NuGet package as well. And because we're creating a deep neural network for image classification, we need the Microsoft.ml.vision NuGet package. All right, so with that updated, let's start on our console project. And the first thing is, and by the way, most of the stuff we're gonna do here is kind of similar to this video here, uh, just with some updates from the packages. So how we get our images and all that are gonna be similar to the previous video. And so first thing we gonna do is get our images folder that we use path that combine and I'll use environment.current directory and I'll go back one, two, three item, three folders back and I'll get the images folder and I'll get all the files in that folder using directory.getfiles and I'll start with that images folder I'll get everything using the wildcard and I'll use a search option all directories and now I'm going to get my images using files that I already missed the files so using that that select and for each file I'm going to create a new image data class and let's go ahead and create that before we continue so this is going to have two properties first is a string image path then a string label that it belongs to. Let's go back here. Image path is going to be the file. And our label is going to be directory.get parent. So get the parent of the file and then the name of that parent. So each image data is going to have the image path of each of these and then the label is going to be the directory name. And next, let's create our context new ml context and then we get our image data by using context data load from innumerable we pass in our images and then we shuffle that data because right now all is coming in is in this order here so we can shuffle it so it can be a bit more random so do context data shuffle rows and pass in that image data. And now let's split our data. Use context data, train test split. Use our image shuffled data set. And I like to use a 20% test fraction. So we have our split. Now let's create some validation data. And for this, uh, this is kind of a pipeline that we're gonna do to our validation data. So it's in the correct format when we pass it in. So context that transforms conversion map value to key. So we're going to map the labels to a label key and pass in the label column name there. And we're going to give it the key ordinality of by value. So it's going to 
transform these names into keys, to numerical keys. And then a little pinned context transforms. I'm gonna load raw image bytes. It's gonna lo load in the raw images from that path. And it's gonna create a new column called image. Give it the images folder. And then the input name is gonna be image path. And that's from up here in our image data class. And then we'll go ahead and fit on our test train data test set and then we'll transform on our test set as well. So that prepares our validation data. Next, let's build a some separate pipelines here. So for our images, we'll do something similar to what we did for our validation data set. Uh, we will run the conversion map value to key transform. So it's gonna be label key and pass in the label and then that by value, then I'll append the context transforms load raw image bytes. It's going to be the image, images folder, and then image path as input. And let's set, specify what parameter we're filling in here. So here we have that pipeline. Now we get the images data model by calling the images pipeline fit on our train data set and then we get our image data view by calling image data model that transform also on our train data set this prepares our test set to be in the correct format that we need next we're going to build some options and these options are required for our image classification trainer so the new image classification trainer dot options. We have several options we can do. First, we'll tell it what architecture we want. So your architecture dot, I'll do ResNet 250. Now these options is one of the different changes from the previous video. Uh, instead of a options class, we specify them directly as parameters. We set the epoch to 100 batch size to 20, learning rate to 0.01F. The label column name is gonna be label key. Then the feature column name is gonna be image. Next we have the option of sending in a validation set, which is why we did our validation data up here. So we can set our validation data. And there are plenty of other things, early stopping criteria, final model prefix, if you wanna change the default, checkpoint file and folder prefix, metrics callback, if you wanted to kind of print to the console or something, um, score column name, if you wanna change that name, and a few other things, but we'll leave it like this for now. And now for our main pipeline, context that multi-class classification, and we do trainers, that image classification, which is what we get from that image analytics NuGet package. And we pass in our options, and then we append on that, context transforms, conversion, map key to value. So up here, we map value to key to get our label key, and down here we can map that back from the predicted label back to a label that was one of these. It does conversion for us, so we don't have to do any other calculations to get what label that we are getting. And so for our model, we just do pipeline.fit on our image data view. And now we can create a prediction engine using context to model create prediction engine. I'm going to do an image model input instead of our image data up here. And I'll do image prediction as our output and pass in the model. And let's create these real quick. Right, for our image model input, now this is going to be different because we have in here because we did load raw image bytes, so we have a different input than what we have here. So what we have as a byte array, and that's the image data. Then we have label as key. Then we have the regular image path and then the string label. So these two items are new and that's gonna be what's needed for our prediction. 
Speaking of our prediction, let's do that. I'm going to also add the image path and then the label in here as well, but I'm also going to add the predicted label. And that is what we get back from here in this conversion. All right, so now to do some testing on our test set there. Now similar to above, we're going to create a test images folder using path that combine. So environment, current directory, and go go back three and get our test folder. And we're going to get our test files using directory dot get files using the test images folder. Just like before, we get everything with the wildcard and the search option is all directories. Then we create our test images using test files dot select. And for each file, we're going to create a new image model input instead of the image data. And then here we give it the image path of the file. And I'm going to do a console write line as an environment that new line so it separates our test output from our predict our training output up here. So test images data. So we context that data load from enumerable on our test images. Then we do a test image data view by using our images pipeline and fit on our test images data view. And then we transform on that as well. So we're using the same images pipeline on our test images data, just like we did up here in our train set, because it needs to be in that format before we can pass it into our, our model. And speaking of which, we can grid our predictions by using model that transform and then using that test image data view. So our test image data view is going to be in the correct format with the load image, load raw image bytes and all that. Now we can get our test predictions by using context data and create enumerable. It's going to be image prediction. We pass in our predictions and set reuse rev object to false. Now we have an enumerable of our predictions. We can loop over those. So for each prediction and test predictions, and here we can just console dot right line. And so for our image in path that gets file name on our prediction image path. So it gets the file name on the image path, which by the way file name contains what the correct label is and then our predicted label from prediction that predicted label. So let's run this and see how it works. All right, so running this, we get this error, unable to load DLL TensorFlow or one of its dependencies. So if you get that, you should be able to solve that by getting another NuGet package from the SciSharp folks, TensorFlow, and redistributable. So it's version 2.3, but I know 1.5 works. So I'm just gonna do that instead. Okay, now we got that, and now let's run this again. All right, so that ran, and we have our predictions here. So our daisy was correctly predicted as a daisy, daisy. Dandelion was a dandelion. Rose is a rose. We see sunflowers incorrectly predicted as a dandelion. So we might need to add some more training data for sunflower and dandelion just to add more data to it. And our tulip was successfully predicted as a tulip. So hopefully that, that helps you on the new Microsoft.ml.vision package instead of the Microsoft.ml.dnn package that we used before. Hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see y'all next time. Thanks.